In the few years that I've been doing this, I've written about some of the biggest wrestling moments of the modern era, but none perhaps as shocking as this one. New Japan Pro Wrestling has announced that face of the company, Kazuchika Okada, is leaving the promotion, and I'm at a loss for words. This video might have a tone that a lot of you might have not expected. While it would be easy for me to celebrate the potential of Okada joining AEW, the ramifications of this are so much bigger than that. Okada is not just a main eventer in New Japan, he's the main eventer. He's the ace who's been the center of the promotion for the past 8 years. And all of a sudden, just like that, he's gone. New Japan has long had to deal with their top talent eventually leaving for America, and time and time again they managed to rebuild and create new stars. But the people who left were never the number one guy. This time, it's different. Okada choosing to leave New Japan as the ace of the company, who's still very much in his prime, leaves the company in a really tough spot. I have a lot to say on the matter, what it'll mean for whoever signs Okada, and what New Japan should do next. So let's not waste any more time. This is the departure of Kazuchika Okada from New Japan Pro Wrestling. For those who don't really grasp the gravity of the situation, the only thing I can really compare this to is if John Cena had suddenly left WWE in his prime. I gotta say, since the announcement was made, emotions have been at an all-time high, and I understand. The New Japan faithful feel slighted, and fans of all other companies are excited at the thought of Okada joining their favorite promotion. And then there's me, who doesn't really know how to feel about the situation. Let me explain. Before there was ever an AEW, there was New Japan. New Japan was my favorite promotion in the world when TNA began losing their way and WWE was growing as stale as ever. I almost completely gave up on wrestling during that weird mid-2010s era. But it was New Japan that kept my fandom alive. It was the Bullet Club with AJ Styles, the fall and rise of Tetsuya Naito, and of course, the passing of the torch from Hiroshi Tanahashi to Kazuchika Okada that made me fall in love with the promotion. And then you had the rise of Kenny Omega and his series of matches against the man himself, Okada, that had me staying up until like 4 in the morning to watch all the major New Japan shows live. It was a different era, a special era, and I think about that time in my fandom quite often. Would Tranquilo Club even exist without the rise of Naito or the Kenny Okada matches? I don't think it would, but the point here is, that run that New Japan had throughout the 2010s is up there with the best runs that any wrestling promotion has ever had. And it was because of the incredible roster and the compelling stories that were being told. And who was at the forefront of it all? Who was leading the charge for New Japan? It was Okada. You see, the 2010 saw Kazuchika Okada become the ace of the promotion with his Rainmaker persona. It wasn't just the absolutely unbelievable in-ring talent, it was the character, the presentation, the aura of Kazuchika Okada that cemented him as the face and the final boss of New Japan. All you need to do is watch one of his entrances, and when you see the money raining down along with the Rainmaker pose, you'll understand. Preceded by Hiroshi Tanahashi, Okada had some big shoes to fill early on. But when his moment came in January 2016 at Wrestle Kingdom 10, he took the torch that Tanahashi passed to him, ran with it, and never looked back. His fourth reign as the IWGP Heavyweight Champion in particular is considered one of the greatest world title reigns of all time. With 12 successful defenses and 720 days as champion, Okada cemented his legacy. During this reign, many started to laud Okada as one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. The crazy part? He was only 30 years old. The fact that Okada was being put in greatest of all time conversations at the age of 30 shows just how good the Rainmaker is. New Japan could always count on him. When the likes of AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura left in 2016, it was okay because they still had Okada. Then in 2019, when Kenny Omega left New Japan, it was okay because they still had Okada. Then Jay White and Will Ospreay both left, and you guessed it, they still had Okada. Until now. Okada leaving out of nowhere is even more shocking when you consider how he was always there through the tough moments that New Japan faced. Not just when talent left, but during the pandemic as well. It practically became a meme to say that anytime anything went wrong in New Japan, they could just put the world title back on Okada and everything would be okay in the end. Why? Because that's what an ace does. He puts the company on his back and weathers the storm. Another thing that an ace usually does is the passing of the torch when the time comes. Which brings me to my next point. 
with Okada's sudden looming departure, it hasn't left New Japan time to properly crown their new ace. From what I've seen, this has left a lot of the New Japan faithful frustrated. And once again, I get it. Some are saying Okada is choosing to leave without doing business, and some are putting the blame on New Japan. Honestly, I don't really want to blame anyone in this situation because this is a situation that I wish never happened. If it were up to me, Okada would stay in New Japan and spend the next several years building up some of the younger guys that will succeed him and the likes of Naito. But unfortunately, that's not the case. The wrestling world needs a stable New Japan with their ace on top. I couldn't ever imagine a New Japan without Hiroshi Tanahashi in his prime, but at least New Japan was sort of prepared for the post-Tanahashi era. It hurts to say, but New Japan really doesn't feel ready for a post-Okada era. Sure, you have Shota Umino, Ren Arita, and Yota Tsuji waiting in the wings, but without a proper passing of the torch moment, New Japan will have a lot of work to do to cement their new ace. This also poses the question if New Japan will turn to someone like Kaito Kiyomiya from NOAA and officially bring him on board. New Japan will be left scrambling to find the right guy at an awkward time. My only hope is that the company comes out okay from all of this. I had hoped that Okada's longtime rival, Hiroshi Tanahashi, being appointed president of New Japan would help him stay with the company, but even that wasn't enough. In the end, New Japan can't compete with the money that AEW and WWE are offering. And maybe that was the main factor in Okada leaving New Japan. Kazuchika Okada is reportedly the highest earner by far in New Japan, so it's not like he was making scraps. The fact of the matter is though, American companies would break the bank for the Rainmaker. AEW audiences are far more familiar with Okada due to the hardcore wrestling fanbase and the forbidden door factor. Anytime Okada has wrestled in an AEW ring, the crowds have gone nuts. WWE on the other hand are a more casual wrestling audience. They wouldn't know who Okada is right out of the gate, you'd have to ease him in. There's pros and cons in joining either company, but I'll be honest, whoever signs Okada better be ready for their current plans to be thrown out the window. What do I mean by that? Well, Okada is so good and such a superstar that people are going to expect him to be pushed to the moon right out of the gate. I'm talking make him world champion within 12 months type of push. Anything less than that might see people criticize the promotion he signs for of misusing him. Whether it's AEW or WWE, booking Okada is going to be tricky. And that's another reason why I wish Okada would have just stayed in New Japan. It's hard for me to imagine him wrestling with the American weekly TV presentation. On the other hand, there is a part of me that gets excited at the possible matches he can have in America. Like just imagine Okada in the Continental Classic this year. Omega Okada 5 anyone? Anyway, whether it's Triple H or Tony Khan, whoever ends up recruiting Kazuchika Okada to their roster better have a plan for him. Because with all due respect to everyone else, Okada isn't your typical signing. He's a once in a lifetime get. I wish it hadn't come to this. While I do get excited at the thought of Okada tearing it up in AEW, New Japan is his home. And as I said before, Okada is a huge reason why I fell in love with New Japan in the first place. Of course, the one positive of signing with AEW over WWE is the possibility of still working some New Japan shows. But even then, it just doesn't feel right. What's Forbidden Door even going to look like this year without Okada representing New Japan? It's a thought that I never knew would cross my mind, yet here we are. Wrestling is crazy, nothing is ever guaranteed, and I'd hope that you'd realize that by now. It's the end of an era for New Japan and Kazuchika Okada, and I just hope that both sides come out okay. Whatever it is that Okada does, I'll be watching. But I'll also be watching New Japan closely as they move on from their ace. One thing I have to say though is, whether AEW existed or not, I feel like this was inevitable. This wasn't the result of tampering or raiding as some bad faith grifters would have you think. This is a result of real world circumstance which has left New Japan in a tough economic spot. Maybe they needed this to happen in order to properly move on. Maybe I'm just a mark on the internet who has no idea what he's talking about. I guess all I can say for now is, thank you Okada and thank you New Japan. I can't wait to see what both sides do next. <laughs>